Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, I'm a software developer. So, and uh, Agile is how we work. And now uh, I see more and more organizations outside of software. They look into Agile teams and say, oh, wow, what were you doing? Like, your results are impressive. We want to do the same. And it's different. And uh, people are interested. That's why kind of I came in to speak about this. Uh, I start with history. Uh, that's how we traditionally build applications. So you can think of products, right? So we first uh, do feasibility study. We think, OK, <laughs> is there a valuable product? Is there any value we can deliver? We plan how we're going to do it. We design what our application is going to look like. We give design to developers. Developers go away. They code. They finish coding. They give it to testers, testers test, and it goes into production, into support, different people involved. Very straightforward, very logical, never works, okay? <laughs> never works for any complexity. And the world is complex, and <coughs> just, it kept failing and failing, and uh, people uh, in like 1986 started thinking what, what, what's happening, it should be something different, something new, and that's where Lean started, and uh, this article, you can still find it, and it's still valid. So if you read it up, it's, it's good, even if it's old. Um, so developers in 2001, they come together for conference, and uh, they said, OK, what's the problem with this waterfall? How we can change software development uh, so we actually deliver and not fail all the time? And they come up with Agile Manifesto. You can, again, Google and find it, Agile Manifesto. Uh, and what it says, these things on the left, they're important, right? Like process important, planning important, it's all good, but we value things on the left more. Okay. So people more important than process. Working applications, working products more important than documentation. Right? Um, that's pretty much all you need to know about Agile. Uh, and we can all go home unless you want to know how. You know. And how to do this, it's a big question. And uh, I won't be able to, like, to tell you everything, but I'll go quickly, give you a few ideas, and then you can like, go on your own and uh, do your research and investigate. Agile is a mindset, but there are a few frameworks which kind of help you to be agile. And Scrum is the framework, right? Scrum tells you what to do, how to do it. But Agile is mindset, right? So in Scrum is not Agile. It's not the same. People confuse them very often because Scrum is so popular. It's like dominating framework. But I'm not going to talk about Scrum, right? I'm just going to focus on Agile, Agile values and what it, what it means for us. So one of the most important things doing Agile is not being Agile, right? If you implement Scrum and you do all the stand-ups and your Kanban and everything, you're kind of doing Agile things and you get some improvements, right? You, you get better visibility, better communication, like through Kanban boards and stuff. You get some performance improvements. But what you want to do is be Agile, right? To have a mindset, Agile mindset. And it's a mindset focused on learning. And what you get out of that, continuous learning, you get better employee engagement and uh, delighted customers in the end. I give you a few ideas, like very short and focused ideas. And then we try to bring it all together. So when we say people, more important than process, we need to allow people to actually do their work, right? And uh, when you're not focused, it, it's not possible, right? Multitasking is not possible. So, uh, sorry. Agile says there are a few techniques, and it's very focused on, on giving people focus, right? Um, like, let's say, Pomodoro technique. When you set up timer for, like, 20 minutes, you remove all distractions, and you just do the thing you're supposed to do for 20 minutes. And then you have a rest of five minutes, right? 
It's called Pomodoro Technique. You can find it. Uh, some people find it useful. Other things is um, like sprints in Scrum, right? It's, it's all about focusing on the work we want to deliver during the sprint. Um, another thing is work in progress is a waste. This comes from Lean. And you want to lean it your work in progress. Same thing with focus. It gives you focus and you know when when you're not finished work, you cannot sell it, right? The product not finished, you can't get any value out of it. Out of it. And uh, the more you work on it, uh, until you finish, you can't learn what, what you've done wrong, right? So by delaying the finishing, you delay your learning, you delay all the best outcomes, and then. Some people have so much work in progress, they say, oh, I have so much stuff to do, I can't do anything. Right? You just cannot focus. Um, and then, longer you go on a task, more you invested into it. There is a uh, sunk cost bias kicks in, right? And you think, oh, I spent so much time doing this thing. It has to be good. It has, it has to like make it perfect, you know? But that's not what we want with Agile. We want to learn, we want to, deliver, fail, and see what, what we did wrong, adjust, and uh, do it again. Um, we've been to Greece uh, a few years back with my wife, and this guy is sitting on like marketplace making these sandals, selling them. You know, this is craftsmanship. That's what we want. The guy who like designs, he makes, he sells, he talks to customers every day, right? He gets feedback. Craftsman, he's proud of his product, right? I made it. Yeah, I, s I sell it. Yeah, I deliver value. Uh, compare this to like factory workers, right? Somebody works on a shoe factory, and uh, you tell him, "Hey, bought your shoes? They not good, Mike." And he's like, "Okay, I'm doing shoelaces. Any problem with shoelaces? No, no problem with shoelaces. Just horrible shoes. Well, I'm doing my job well, right? I'm doing up to standard." Finish five o'clock, go home, happy, watch Game of Thrones, all good. And you tell like craftsmanship that your product is not good, you know, you're gonna ruin his uh, night, Game of Thrones experience. That's what we want, we want craftsmen. What we get is uh, waterfall. We have experts, right? So uh, we have well-defined stages and experts come in like analysts, does requirements gathering, done, move on. Next step, designer, programmer. All these people, they responsible for the specific areas of a product, right? Development. The question is, who is responsible to bring joy to your customers, right? And that's what we wanna break these silos and make each person craftsman who builds and delivers and proud of what he's built. How do we do this? Agile talks about two pizza teams. What it means is you need to, have, uh, when you're buying pizzas for your team, you should buy two boxes, no more. Because when team grows too big, you cannot collaborate, you cannot really work well enough. So small, focused team. team uh, also, it's cross-functional. So team can deliver from start to end. There's no like analyst, uh, developer, and tester, right? They all come together, the team member, and team has capacity to deliver. In, in your case, let's say you have a salesperson, marketing person, like designer, right? What if you put salesperson on a design team, right? He might design a product which sells itself right? in the end. So team responsible for delivering a product and has all the capacity to deliver it. Self-organizing. So uh, um, how we put, what sort of people we're looking for? It's, uh, we call them T-shaped people. So people who are generalists, they have a broad knowledge of different subjects like that salesperson who knows a little bit about marketing, knows a little bit about product development, about design, but he's an expert in sales, right? So we have 
uh, deep expertise in one area, but broad knowledge. We put them together, different uh, areas of expertise, and we cover everything we need to deliver the product. And then what we do with this team, we do short iteration cycles. Uh, Scrum calls them sprint, so this picture from Scrum, but it's all the same. You want to make this loop shorter, so because at the end, you're going to learn what happened. Right? You don't want to plan for too long ahead, because it's impossible. This the complex environment. You, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, so many things happening. You don't have control over. All you can do is do something, deliver, learn, adjust, and change. We want to focus on learning. Right? Agile, all about learning. So how to get in the learning zone? Zone. There has to be some performance pressure. Right. Stress, and stress is good for you actually. Stress helps you to deliver. Like all students know that everything is done on the night before exam, right? Because when, when you have this pressure, you really push yourself to work, but only if you have this safety. Uh, I'll talk about safety later, but learning is diff uh, agile mindset is different in a way, we don't say we want to successfully launch a rocket to the moon. We say we want to learn how to launch a rocket to the moon. That's our focus. But in the end, it's going to be there. But it's just a side effect of your learning. Right? Um, let's say I was contracting myself uh, a few years back and I had to go through a lot of interviews to get a secure next uh, job position and I always go for this interview but when I go I'm thinking I don't go to get a job I go to learn how to do interview I cannot fail right I come and if they ask me hard questions I don't know answer I go yes I now know where I'm failing I can go and learn it and come and do better next time right and sometimes disappointing, they say, oh, you're so good, we give you a job. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I have to, right? <laughs> um, so what's safety? This is a good slide. Um, Self-explanatory. Google did the research on why some teams perform better than others. And you can find it. It's called the Project Aristotle. And on top was safety. Right. So if you have good people on a team, you have this craftsmanship mentality, you have to let them you know, be to deliver because people want to you know, deliver good stuff. They want to be useful and helpful. And that's how you uh, do it. Another thing is uh, talk about team all the time, what happened to managers. Uh, unfortunately, agile has to come from the top. You cannot just be agile as a team without involvement of your management. Because management has to change. It has to be, become servant leadership. And what it means now, instead of telling people what to do, you help them. Right? You, you ask what, what I need to do for you to deliver, to be your best. Right? You just remove all the impediments, and you help them grow and deliver. <coughs> Again, difference in the mindful, uh, in the mindset. Sorry. Waterfall say, okay, we don't want to fail. How we make sure we don't fail? We plan, we prepare, we put experts on every area. Doesn't work. So, and uh, agile. Said, um, we are going to fail, right? We don't know anything. It's out of our control. It's all messy. We're going to fail. How we failing small and learning still kind of fail our way into success, right? So we reduce cost of change. We don't want to have like when we start. 
project or product development, we don't know where we're going to end up. So we start with the mindset that we're going to change, how we uh, give ourselves ability to change in the future. Right? That's where you focus, because what you're doing is not right, because you don't know what you're doing. But when you deliver, you learn, you say, okay, now we change, because we, we learned our lesson. It's not how you build the product on top. So you don't start with perfect wheel to get a perfect car and perfect chassis, perfect body, right? You deliver something. It's going to be you know, horrible. It, it's not going to work, but it, it, you get some value out of it, right? You, at least you, you can test and see if people like it, if people use it. Um, and you know what? I, uh, I help like uh, startups to build MVPs and uh, prototypes, and they usually come and uh, they spend like 10 minutes explaining their idea, and they say, "Okay, when my app is going to be done? I'm like, okay, uh, when Facebook is going to be done? Right? So many engineers, developers working on the Facebook app, when it's going to be done? It's not it's not the right question, right? Because Facebook is going to be done when there's no users. There's no users." Application, it's done. Until people using it, you, you're going to keep working on it. So, right question would be what can you deliver in two weeks? How you can solve my problem in two weeks? <coughs> right? And that's where you start. And then we improve on it. Agile loves deadlines. I love this quote. When you work in waterfall, you have to be perfect all the time. So when you're an analyst creating business requirements, you know you have to prepare this document, you give it to developers, and you never have a chance to change it anymore. Because your job is done, you get paid, and you deliver. So people pushing deadlines out. They don't wanna, like, they wanna make, be perfect. They want more time. With Agile, we want to fail fast. Fail fast. That's what we want, because we want to learn. We, we want to bring deadlines forward so we don't spend too much time doing the wrong thing. Like, and everything should be time boxed. Everything, there should be that uh, deadline on every task you do. Even like your stand up in the morning, it has time box 15 minutes with Agile. You can't plan complex environments. Like, would you plan what you're gonna wear in three months ahead? Because weather is complex. You, you don't know what's gonna happen. And the best bet is just delay, delay your plane to the last possible moment. Because that's the moment where you get the most information. Yeah? Don't rush, like, and instead of saying planning, you can say guessing, right? I don't mind, like, if people say, hey, let's have a guessing meeting. Because that's honest. Like, if you want to do that, that's up to you, but most likely it's going to be waste if it's too far ahead. One of the agile principles, defer commitments. Don't be efficient, be effective. So being efficient is not wasting any time on thinking or anything. You know what to do, and you just do it like a robotic, right? Uh, don't waste any time. Being effective is producing expected result. Right? So let's say <coughs> McDonald's. McDonald's is efficient, right? You come in and they want to feed you fast and they very they know what to do. They're very fast, they very precise, and they have all the you know procedures in place, so they go bam, 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 done. Right? Very efficient. You go to a fancy restaurant, they're not efficient at all, right? There's so much waste of time, and you sit and wait, and you know, chef comes out of kitchen and talks to you. You know, he sh should be chopping vegetables, there, but no, he just he wants to learn about you. And then you get the experience, you know. And after that, you tell your friends, "Oh, I've been good restaurants, awesome." Go, you know, talk. You know, uh, nobody talks about the experience in McDonald's. Right? Another example, personal, like. It's very efficient to have a lunch at your desk at work, right? You read through emails and your lunch, bam, 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 very efficient. 
but maybe if you go outside, have a lunch, enjoy, you know, your meal, go for a walk, you might get some ideas. Because when your mind is bored, that's where you get ideas. It can't stay still, it keeps working on it. We used to deliver software like every three years, right? Like Microsoft would build my, uh, Windows 95, 97, two, three years, because it was very hard to release software. You have to print all these you know, uh, disks and uh, boxes and manuals, distribute them. It was a super hard process. You can't make mistake and all of that. Amazon now releases every 10 seconds. It can't be hard anymore. Like when you do it instead of every three years, every 10 seconds, it can't be hard. This talk is hard for me, right? What should I do about this? Just do it more often. Get a practice, you know? If it's like writing blog post is hard for you, do it every day. What about doing it every 10 minutes? And you're thinking, dang, different levels right away, right? It's not hard anymore. I like this uh, very good example of agile process at work. So you see the complex system, like it's, it's impossible to plan, right? You can't plan for every animal where they go, right? And that's fine. We just need to have our goal and our team working together to achieve, yeah? Team, they know what to do, yeah? Also, what's interesting, like, the guy on the side of the dogs, they have no idea what's happening in the middle, yeah? And that's fine. Because you don't want certainty. You, you don't really need this. You still can do your work. And you don't see dogs here, but they don't run straight to the goal, right? They go left and right, left and right, and they adjust all the time. They see what's happening, and that's how work is done. If you've seen uh, dogs working on a uh, royal show, right? They're very, very interesting. They, they don't make a big movement, right? They, they do very kind of tiny left and right, left and right. What they're trying to do is reduce cost of change. <coughs> you don't want to make a big mistake. You don't want to just go for it, right? The animals will go everywhere. So reduce your cost of change, do your little movements, release often, and adjust. Adjust to what's happening. Don't try to achieve certainty because it's impossible and you're just wasting your time. And you don't even want certainty. Putting this all together, this is what people came with. It's uh, modernagile.org. And uh, this is not uh, specifically for software developers, just general practices. Um, go and have a look. But it's all kind of simple stuff, and it's natural, because nature is agile. Nature doesn't plan ahead. It just runs experiments. When you run experiments, you're going to fail, because that's the definition of experiment. If everything you do is right, you're not running experiments, right? Deliver. Yeah, make your people awesome and safety. Uh, all the good stuff. Um, I don't know what time it is, but I'm kind of <laughs> running out of voice. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, loads of time for Q&A. So first of all, thanks very much, Alex. Okay, thank you, Alex. We've got to be loads of questions, so we've got to extend the time for Q&A. So please, folks, fire, fire your questions ahead for Alex. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, how would you synthesize HR with traditional large companies? You know, um, I'm sort of doing a procurement yeah. team and negotiating. So, so I have to sort of, you know, do that to get the money, but then, on the other hand, I would like to have something more flexible. You know, so how do you sort of synthesize it? You know, people with money with people with ideas. Yeah, that's what I said. Like You have to have uh, a job to come from the top. You cannot really do it properly without your management or your you know, customers. Um, 
So, but development teams, they usually kind of try to go around it and uh, even uh, project managers have all the plans and everything. We still try to work as much as possible in agile way in, inside those uh, plans. Can you give an example? <coughs> Not really, no. Just be agile, just try. Um, but yeah, that's the problem. Uh, you can't go around. But and when you talk to your customer, usually they want perfect product straight away. And uh, it, it takes kind of, uh, it's hard to explain, I give you something which is bad, but I'm going to improve. And all you can do is build a trust. When you deliver often, first thing you deliver very quickly, and they say, oh, it's better, that's okay. In a week, I'll give you better. <coughs> the next week, better, next week, better, you know? Six, seven weeks, and they think, oh, this guy's delivering, it's improving all the time. They see trajectory, momentum. That's how you win people over. Yeah. Yes? Don't try to change too much, right? And uh, start small. Start small. Uh, that's all you can do. Yeah? There is no like silver bullet, and you say, uh, but <coughs> feedback is very valuable. Also, know your target audience. Like you know that uh, technology adoption. First, when you have a, like when you start with a new product, you target at the um, people who are really passionate about it. The early adopters, they they don't care how it's nice or how good it's looking. They want value of the look. And if you can't please these guys, there's no value. And that's where you have to stop. Yeah, so yes. Yep. Um, I'd like to share about the sort of journey of discovery I've been on with, with Agile. Since then, I've been in, 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 in sort of more of a startup world uh, and looked at the uh, you know, uh, lean startup, like the education and that sort of thing. But I guess the grass is not necessarily greener in, in the agile world uh, as, as I like to learn. And, and, and where it sort of fell down for me was the role of quality in agile. Uh, and, and, and that's maybe I guess a little question. So we developed an MVP. says uh, quality comes for free because when your people are craftsmen right, they they want to deliver quality you don't have to do anything to ensure quality because that's what people want they want to deliver you know good stuff mm -hmm. so uh, with expectation yeah that's what I said just iterate um, 
like Agile says, uh, contract negotiation is less important than customer collaboration. Yeah. You have to have a good relationship with your customer and you have to build the trust. Yeah. And uh, but also, yeah, that's the problem when people have taken prototype and try to run with that. That might be okay, but you have to build your prototype in a way so you actually can can do that. You know, so you when, when you start, yeah. Applying the engineering standards to the MVP, even though that's not necessarily the fastest way to get through the double measure of learning to work. Um, should you spend that engineering time there, or should you try and get to your sort of validated testing phase uh, and spend it with the fastest, quickest sort of way to code? Yeah. So. Uh, Yeah, some industries are more strict, uh, like rules and regulations. So you have to work with the rules and regulations if you have a, like, uh, I don't know, a <coughs> bridge or something. Uh, this, you, you need to make sure it, it's not going to collapse, but still, uh, if some bridge is collapsing, <coughs> it's not still going to hold it. Um, yeah, to just, just try, try go for it. And, uh, this is mindset change. We're going to learn, we're going to fail. How we fail but still keep going. We is the, you know that uh, book, uh, Anti-Fragile. Uh, Anti-Fragile book is very yeah, important. Must read. What Waterfall is doing, they delay in failure. They say, we're not going to fail, we're not going to fail, fail, fail. Ah, that's it, delay. And it's catastrophic. That's one massive failure. What we want to do is a lot of small failures to avoid this big one. Yeah. And uh, all the systems anti-fragile, uh, like uh, your body is anti-fragile. Yes. You go to gym, you stress your body to, to give it up. Right. You have to put stress on the system. And that's, that's how it is. It's, it's yeah. So if you try to fail, you want to go to the big failure, the big points first, like the success of Google X trying to do it. What the big elephants is in first, to sort of scale the way around you. So would you advocate that you know, just trying to go for the big then sort of converge? You usually do the hardest things first. Like, uh, yeah, when you start a company, what do I do? I do logo, you know, I do like website. It's all easy, you know, stuff. It, it's going to come, but well, what's your hard problem you're going to solve? If you focus on that and try to tackle that and actually validate it's. Uh, going to be, you know, idea <coughs> work building. Uh, but also, you, you need to have small wins as well. So wins, they give you momentum. And when you deliver often, you get that momentum going and say, yeah, we deliver it, we deliver it, we, we're on the right track. So it's a bit of a balance. So you want to focus on hard things, but you want to break them down into small chunks and deliver them. is not your family, right? When you have a, you know, some dodgy guy in your family, you still, you don't abandon them, they you kind of, you, you live with them, right? But team, your development team is like your sports team, right? Sport team, they all have the same goal, they, they work together, they jail, they support each other, but if you're not good enough, you're not on the team, right? You're not on the field playing. You have to be good enough to be on your team. So you pick your people, definitely. What you want is people who can, I, I think most of the people can be craftsmen, right? If they make something with their hands, they will be proud to sell it and to give it to people, right? And that's what you want, somebody passionate about producing results. Also, uh, 
I talked about T-shaped people. So you don't want to have experts very like, in the box expert. You want people with broad knowledge. They know a little bit of everything they need to do to do your product, but they're expert in one area. And then you put these people together, experts in different areas, and your team should have all the capacity to deliver. The team should, can, should be able to take the product and deliver to the customer. Right. And that's where you get your craft. Time for one more question, please. Yes, yes, some would, but I've never seen one. Uh, I think maybe, you know, where you so regulated, you have to go according to plan, maybe like in medicine somewhere, I don't know. And autonomy with the service or the intangible that? I don't think it makes a difference. Yeah. You should be passionate about what you deliver in the service. And uh, you have to try. Uh, yeah. so. Okay. So, um, thank you.